Hi, I'm Alex Daly for Daily Driver TV. Today we're going to address the Achilles heel of this chariot, the cooling system. A little under-engineered from the factory, and this car is just old, I have some upgrades that should really bulletproof it for the car show season. We got a radiator out of a Z3M, Mishimoto all-metal expansion tank, this Stewart pump with a metal impellers grate. Look at the fitment information. It tells you how long this has been a problem. 91 to 05. Two main hoses are new. We got a new hose to go with the expansion tank. Um, one of the guides said M6 bolts are good for getting the water pump out. New metal thermostat housing. I think the M52 already has a metal one, but we got a new housing, new thermostat. Of course, concentrate and distilled water funnels. Um, this is good, a new sensor. Anyone that knows E36s says they're always crying about no coolant, low coolant level. Maybe a new sensor will help that system. Um, and then some tools to help get the job done. A big flathead is useful for the radiator clips. This is a 32 millimeter fan clutch wrench. That's a reverse thread and it helps to have the belt on to get, to get that nut off. And then uh, this is for the radiator hoses. Just makes a really easy job of getting them off. So we want to make sure at the end we do a good job of tightening everything and bleeding it well so there aren't any issues. Let's get started. Some of these complex German cars have a plastic petcock drain on the bottom of the radiator that if it's an older one like this is best left untouched because it's just going to break and cost you a new radiator. Common wisdom if you have to drain the system is to just take off a lower hose like normal. I am replacing the radiator so we can give this a whirl. Looks like it is coming out in one piece. Just beating on the 32 millimeter wrench with the hammer against the resistance of a good serpentine belt didn't do much besides move the car. I got this gear wrench and there's a couple different versions. Universal pulley holder. They basically use the bolt of the pulley in these hooks and you can grab a hold of a pulley and work against it. I guess these are spacers we don't need because it's a very low clearance situation. I also moved the alternator duck out of the way. Let's see how it goes. Ready? I couldn't really reach the coolant level sender's plug on the bottom of this overflow bottle, otherwise the shroud's ready to come out. Just pop the fan off the clutch. There we go. There's one more hose at the bottom of this too. I do have a new shroud. I could just smash this thing to pieces. I have a new hose for that matter too. I could just cut that. Oh, you know what? I think this is where those bolts come in handy. Hold on. Oh, already a metal impeller one. All right.
making good progress. I have the water pump out, the shroud out, the radiator out. And if I weren't doing hard mode, I would start reassembling right now. But my next step is to take off the intake manifold because I got a heater control valve as well and a totally comprehensive heater hose set. So let's dig in. Now we're getting somewhere. Here's two more coolant hoses. These are attached to the throttle body to regulate intake air temperature. Hopefully they're in the kit from FCP Euro. Thing worth its weight in gold right now. Reusable zip ties. Boy, carnage here in Ambler, PA. It's a race to see which gets back on the road first. BMW or the Jeep from a fuel pump. I had been meaning to do this cooling stuff for a while. But what parked this car and made me buy a new fan shroud from BMW was a broken clip on the shroud dropping a hose in the way of the engine fan. Getting the fuel rail and injectors apart was a little tricky. First, drain into a rag or something. And then if you're lucky, the black disconnects will still be on the line by the firewall. It's also important to mark return versus feed line for reassembly. Ranchero just got back from Willwood Upgrade. How's it stop? Stops on a dime. Excellent. So I thought I was completely done disassembly, but my FCP Euro complete coolant hose kit came with O-rings. What are these O-rings for? So there's a metal coolant pipe that runs from like the back of the thermostat water pump area and is attached to the intake manifold bracket. We'll get that off and then we can begin reassembly. Woo, this thing works both ways. Game changer. Like you can turn your wrist both directions and it only moves in not one direction. Holy f guys. Just discovered something big. Probably accident damage. But the arm from the block to the motor mount is cracked and possibly only holding by one bolt. Well, once I get a new one, it'll be easy to bolt right in. Boy. Yep. There they are. Just when I thought I'd destroyed a press fit thing. So for absolute worst of luck, one of the engine mount bolts broke off in the block. I decided to head down to Harbor Freight for a little extractor kit. Give that a whirl.
Boom! Screw my St. Joe's MBA. Consider this my masterwork. So this is what the O-rings are for. This coolant delivery pipe that goes into the back of the thermostat housing. Let's get the new ones on and get this piece back into the car. We're almost there. I've had this Mishimoto piece sitting in my parts pile for way too long. It's boxed up like a video game console. It's a really nice black powder coated coolant overflow tank. This will look and work great. Ooh, penguin. Have a new coolant level sensor to go on the bottom of this too. It gives me false warnings almost every time I drive that car. Maybe this one will be a little more accurate. This just kind of clips in by the lower output and then you screw the hose on. That kind of keeps it in. The stock one's a little lighter. There we go. In America, it's hard to find metric vacuum hose. So this 1532nd is gonna work really good for the booster. But the 732nd is a little big for some of the small vacuum lines. And quarter inch is a little too small. So I think this will work if I use these little springy orange CAD plated things I have on hand. The little springy things aren't enough for the small vacuum hose. It's black zip tie time. This heater control solenoid's $230 worth of scope creep. So I couldn't find a truly comprehensive 1998 E36 M52 motor cooling hose diagram. So here it is. I'll also provide a link in the description. All right, really getting there. But these injector O-rings are original. And at least the ones on the cylinder side are pretty cracked. So that's one of the reasons it was so hard to get the fuel rail out. I do have six ones that'll work, just the engine side ones, left over from a Jeep straight six rebuild. Let's go. I have a little work to do on the intake manifold before I put it back. This is the first time I've ever taken it off and I've had the car for about eight years. So new PCV hoses, new PCV part diaphragm thingy, new gaskets so when we put it back it'll seal nicely, and then a new idle air control gasket. We should all make sure it runs at its finest. MTC is even cheaper than Euro parts in the BMW world. I like the super cheap shift knob I have from them though. And this looks basically the same as every single other intake manifold gasket. Who are you talking to? Oh, the internet. The idle air controller controls the amount of air the engine is getting in minute amounts. 
to regulate idle. The throttle is for the large amounts based on your pedal, but the idle air controller has a tiny little valve to finally adjust. Getting there, tightening up the intake manifold brackets to 10 millimeters underneath. Gotta get that last intake manifold nut on all the way back here somehow. I think I gotta take the rail off, fuel rail. Sweet. On with the ASC throttle body. This is an insane way of doing traction control. It's just another throttle that shuts it off for you. The wheels slip. One and a half. One and three quarters. So I was having trouble reattaching the fuel line and I thought I lost slash broke a little clip on the line that rendered it unusable. It turns out it's more like an integrated tool. People lose them, they break off, um, it's not really a problem. What I did was spray carb cleaner into the line, into the disconnect, and then eventually it snapped on. So check this out. So I had a bit of a hiccup with an upper radiator hose in Blueberry Country, but thanks to a nice man named Bob and a parts store that had it in stock, here I am, Beach Haven, New Jersey. Thanks for watching. This is Alex Daly for Daily Driver TV.